Today I'm going to talk about the difference between a normal acrylic paint and the Atelier interactive paints. Now I really love the Atelier interactive paints and use it for nearly all my painting. I'm not affiliated at all with the Atelier interactive paints, it's just a paint I really like. But there are a few little tricks to using it successfully that might trip you up if you are used to a normal acrylic paint. So I just thought I'd make this little video and show you some of the things you can do with this and some of the things to watch out for. Okay, here's my normal acrylic. Here's my Italia Interactive acrylic. Now I painted these at the same time, the normal acrylic is dry, the interactive acrylic is not quite dry, so it's still a little bit tacky to the touch, so it's staying workable for longer, whereas this one is completely dry. Now on this one, Neither paint is very dry. This is your normal acrylic paint, so it's just a little bit damp. And same with your interactive one. I'm going to use some normal black acrylic and some interactive Mars black. On this one with the normal acrylic, I'm going to try and paint over that with some normal black acrylic and as you can see It's not blending and it's going all streaky and in areas it's lifting the paint. I'm just washing my brush off to get some water on there and it's just lifting bits of paint. I get the Mars black, the interactive black and I paint over this. I put a bit of water on my brush. So this paint isn't quite dry, the same as it was down the bottom. And I can actually blend those two colours together. The paint's not lifting, it's blending. So down here, it wasn't mixing in with it. It was just sitting on the top, or it's lifting. And if I just put a layer of black over this one, which is the normal acrylic. And then I'm gonna wait till that paint is nearly dry, but still tacky and show you what happens. And I can go over my Italia as well with the black. I need some more black paint. I'm going over the Italia with the Italia black paint now they look different colours because this is Mars Black and this one is not Mars Black because I didn't have a Mars Black in a normal acrylic. And I didn't have a black black in the Italia. So that's why I've used two different colours there. So I'm going to wait till that's tacky and then I'll show you what we can do next. Now the paint over this side is now dry, so this one here is your normal acrylic, this one's your Italia, and that's all dry, which 
show you my fingers, but they're all covered in paint anyway. So this one here is the normal acrylic. That one's all dry. This one here's the Atelier. That one's all dry, so there's no paint coming off on my finger. They're both all dry. Now, if you've got a painting and you want to make some adjustments on it and your acrylic paint is dry, with the normal acrylic paint, I've just put some water on my brush and I'm going over it and you can see it's doing absolutely nothing. There's no shifting. If I go over the Atelier, I can then blend this colour further, even though that was completely dry, just like this one here. I can now re-blend any areas that I want to re-blend. That's one of the reasons why I love Atelier acrylic paints, is you can go back and re-blend. See if this is tacky enough, it's still a bit too wet. Okay, so this is my normal acrylic and this is my Atelier. Now it's nearly dry, it's at the tacky stage. I put my finger on there and you can see it's lifted the paint. Where that was. And this one's at that tacky stage too, where the paint will lift when you put your finger on it. And I wanted to show you what happens if you're at that stage and you need to mist your canvas because you want to do some more blending. So I've misted both of these. And if I get my paintbrush and think, okay, I just want to do some blending. To blend that, that colour out. And hopefully you can see what's happening is the um, paint is actually lifting and showing the colour underneath instead of blending. So I keep wetting my brush but it doesn't make any difference, it's just actually getting worse. Even on there so you can see how the paint is lifting on there. Okay, now we'll do the Atelier Interactive and you can see yes the paint is lifting in the same way at the beginning. So that one, that one is looking the same but then watch what happens as I add more water to my brush. As I add more water to my brush, I can smooth it all out. So, as you can see, the top one, which is the Atelier Interactive, has a nice smooth coverage now whereas this one you can see all the dots where the paint has lifted from underneath and that's not gonna smooth out it's just gonna keep taking more and more paint off it and the more I try and fix it the worse actually it's gonna get so there's another reason why I like the Atelier Interactive paint. This is the Atelier Interactive paint here on um, 
just a piece of watercolour paper that I did about a week ago when I did my last YouTube video. And I wanted to show you that after being cured for a week, it's not shifting just like with a normal acrylic. But if I wanted to come through and do something with that now, I can use the unlocking formula. And I'll show you how that works. So I'll just get a dry brush. And I'm just going to put some of the unlocking formula on my brush. And I'm going to put it over. I'll do a bit that I haven't done the water on. And I'm just going to let it sit there. Even there you can see it's starting to move. So I can go through and then start getting that paint to move and the, so you can see that will now move with the unlocking formula on it so you put it on there you let it sit for a little bit it'll move more quickly afterwards but you can see how I can fade out that edge now with the unlocking formula where it wouldn't move with the water. I wanted to show you how the unlocking formula works. So if your paint is set, that's what you use. And I want to show you how it works on normal acrylic paint as well. So I'm just going to put some of that unlocking formula on my paintbrush and I'm going to put it on top of that acrylic paint and this is the normal acrylic paint and you can see it's lifting that paint and I can move it around. I can blend some of that black under there into the paint but with the Italia paint which is on this side it blends a lot better but you can actually use the unlocking formula on the normal acrylic paint it's just not as effective So on the Italia paint, I'm getting a much better blend. The normal acrylic paint over here and the Italia interactive over here. And I've got two old brushes here. And I'm going to put one of them into this normal acrylic paint and I'm going to put the other one into the Atelier Interactive and then I'm going to go away and leave these to dry Now if you're anything like me and you get so engrossed in your painting that you're always running late for stuff, it's really easy to miss washing a brush when you're busy trying to get out the door and clean up at the same time. And so I wanted to show you how easy the Atelier Interactive will wash out compared to a normal acrylic. Now these paint brushes have been left overnight. This is the one with the normal acrylic in, it's all dry and hard and same with the Atelier Interactive on this brown brush, it's all dry and hard. And I'm just going to use the plain cold water and nothing else to start with to see what happens here. So the normal acrylic is basically just doing nothing. 
you tell her you're interactive, I can feel the brush softening up a bit. And it is starting to shift, but it hasn't completely come out yet. So I'm just going to continue to wash those brushes and see if I can get any more of that paint out. And I'm rubbing them not too hard, but reasonably firmly to try and get that paint out. And this is just plain cold water. It's not warm water, it's cold. There's nothing, no um, soap or brush cleaner or anything on there. It's just cold water on its own. Now you can see that the Atelier Interactive paints, this brush is now clean. There's no paint in it. The one with the normal acrylic paint on it, the paint's still there. I can pull some of it out, but I'm likely to wreck my brush doing that, and there's still bits left in there. So, really easy cleanup with Atelier acrylic paints. Okay, all you acrylic painters out there will know that if you're wearing nail polish and you get acrylic paint on your nail polish, it's really hard to get off. And I just wanted to show you the difference between a normal acrylic paint on your nail polish and in the interactive Atelier acrylic paint on your nail polish. So first of all, I get some of the normal acrylic paint. Stick some of that on my brush. I'm just gonna put some on my nail. I'll do the same with the Atelier Interactive. Some of that on there. And I'll let that dry. So the paint on my nail polish is now dry. And I'm going to try and wash it off with the cold water. This is the one with the normal acrylic paint, this is the one with the Atelier Interactive, so so far neither of them are coming off very well. If I try and sponge it off, you can see the Atelier Interactive has completely come off my nail polish and the nail polish is fine. If I try and do the same thing with the normal acrylic paint. Coming off a little bit, but it's been a lot harder to do. It's taking a lot more work. And it hasn't all come off, there's still. So it hasn't all come off the normal acrylic paint, there's still a bit left on there. Whereas the Atelier Interactive came off very quickly. So there's an unusual reason to use Atelier Interactive paints to save your manicure. Now some of the reasons that I love using Atelier Interactive paints are also some of the reasons that you can get tripped up with it if you don't know about some of the qualities of it. And one of the things that you have to be careful of is the underlayer lifting when you're doing colors on top. Now, if you're used to watercolor painting and you're used to layering your washes, you'll know how to apply a wash without lifting 
layers underneath or if you are used to oil painting and you do the fat over lean method where you start off with thin paint and you build up your layers with thicker and thicker paint you shouldn't have much of a problem either but sometimes you just need to seal that coat before you move on to the next stage. Now when I was doing this little painting here and I knew I was going to be scrubbing in these clouds I knew that as I was scrubbing in that, those clouds I could lift the colour underneath. Now what I did with this painting and this is going to be a bigger version of that is I used my clear painting medium here and I mixed it with my interference paint for this particular one and I've coated all that background colour with that so that now this will not shift it'll be like a normal acrylic paint and nothing will shift when I put stuff over the top and I did the same kind of thing with this painting So in this case I used the clear painting medium in the iridescent paint before I did the clouds over the top so that the underneath layer wouldn't shift. You can just use the clear painting medium on its own. You don't have to mix anything else with it to seal that layer. So you can also use the fast medium fixer to do this but just a word of warning there, your underlayer needs to sit overnight probably before you do this layer because sometimes if the colour is really dark it can make it go cloudy. Now one other thing because of the interactive nature of the paint you do have to seal and varnish your paintings and most acrylic paints will dry with a nice sheen on it already but the Atelier Interactive doesn't, they dry dull and just put that in the sun so you can see it's not a really shiny finish, this one hasn't got anything on it as a finish that's just the paint compared to this one here which has got the fast medium fixer on it, if I put that in the sun you can see just how shiny that is so you do need to seal and varnish before you put your work out for display. I just use the, the Atelier varnish. I usually use a satin varnish but you, you can use gloss varnish or matte varnish depending on what kind of look you want to get. If I'm doing a particularly textured canvas I'll use a spray varnish and in that case you don't need to to fix it but because I'm using a brush on here when I varnish it after I've if I try to just varnish this without any seal what could happen is my varnish brush could drag some of this dark color over here and I'll get streaks in my light clouds which I wouldn't want so that's why you need to seal the canvas first but as long as you know about those little tricks then there are a lot of advantages to this paint as well. So I hope that was helpful. If you've been considering using Atelier Interactive or you've used them before and come across a few of those problems, hopefully this will solve some of those problems for you and it's really worth giving them a go. Now I will say you can use these paints with normal acrylic but you'll you lose that interactive nature of them when you mix them with a normal acry acrylic and they will just become like a ordinary acrylic. So if you want the full interactive nature of it you do need to use all interactive paint. So that's all for today and we'll see you next week. Happy painting everyone!